Hello, fellow humans. Welcome to uh, a game by Superflat Productions, which I assume to be a play on the game being in 16-bit, and uh, in fact many of his other games, uh, Jasper Burns, or Jasper Brunt. I apologize if I pronounced your name wrong. Anyway, the game we will be playing today is called Lone Survivor. It is a survival horror game done in uh, the pixel art. And I will be playing this blind, incredibly. Uh, incredibly for me, because I don't know if my outer wit will shine through. Anyway, um, you can buy the game yourself in the link in the description. It is $10 currently, and uh, the first aid edition is $50. I don't know what extras it comes with, but it has a whole bunch of extra little creeps. It's a little steep, but um, the person who has done this has done so independently, and uh, they were, they've actually composed, I believe, the music that's happening in the background right now, which is utterly fantastic. I'll let you listen to that for just a second. Or two. Alright, so without further ado, uh, <laughs> you can see I uh, continue right there, because I have already tried to record this. I, I'm not trying to jip you on the blind, uh, the blindness of this playthrough. I just have had some recording issues. So without further ado, let us begin a new game. As our screen fades to white, we're going to erase our current game. And so it begins again. So the person that you are seeing in the background right now is who I believe to be our character. He's wearing a surgical mask, for reasons you will see soon. My name is... not important anymore, I guess. <laughs> As you can see in the background, on his right eyebrow, he eyebrow grooming is not exactly his first concern. Used to know how long I'd been here. Now, I've, I've got no idea. A while since the outbreak started, that much I know. Hold up here with the sound of those things outside. Monsters, I guess you'd call them. As far as I know, I'm the only one left. The lone survivor. I wanted a little bit of extra finesse there, because that is our game's title. Can't go much longer, though. Almost out of supplies. And if there's anyone else alive out there, I need to find them. Nothing else. Uh, I don't want to die alone. Which, you know, is understandable. <laughs> Dying alone is a fear of many. Anyway, uh, here we see the 16-bit version of our character with his lovely surgical mask on. We can use the arrow keys to move left and right, and front and back. And as you can see on our character's back is a backpack, which is the excuse for why we are able to carry so many things in this game. <laughs> Who wants to bet that uh, the amount we carry is never proportionate to how much space is in our backpack? <laughs> anyway, uh, as you can see, when we go in front of something, a little X that hovers over it, which is how we interact with things. Uh, he doesn't want to set it down right now, so we're going to examine the next thing in the line of things. Which is a cup of coffee. It looks like a double espresso. <laughs> Our character must have been a, uh, a coffee lover in his life because um, he knows what an espresso looks like just on sight. <laughs> Drink the coffee. <laughs> I am going to say forget it for now. I mean, this could be poison. <laughs> We've got the man who wears a box. And I know the thing on his head is on the, his box is supposed to be a bandage, but it looks suspiciously like a cross. A religious cross, rather. Hello? We're gonna try talking to him. If you hadn't seen, I guess the box is there to block out sound. Hello? <laughs> I guess he can't hear me. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna contend with that. Let's let's talk to him some more. Why are you wearing a box? It does seem like a peculiar fashion decision. I can't blame him for asking. He's not saying anything. Hey! He's not saying anything. He's gonna be a quiet one. I'm a little afraid to talk to him again, actually, because 
know what they say about the quiet ones, especially in anime. I recommend the coffee, says the man who wore a box. We spoke! I, I guess I'll take your advice then. <laughs> Our character is surprisingly easy to manipulate. All you have to do is talk to him. Looks like a double espresso. I suppose we are going to drink the coffee. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why our character is doing this, but we actually can't go left or right, so it's our only option. I'll drink the coffee. And apparently it tastes quite lovely. <laughs> and may I take this opportunity to say that that was out of this world. <laughs> I I'm kidding. I think I can hear something down there. Alright, so let's go off to the right. We can hear the pitter-patter of our character's feet, and uh, a, the increasing sound of static. What's going on in here? That snap in there was a fantastic touch. And to the right of the screen right now is the first video, I mean, the first enemy of the game. He seems to be shuffling his hands together. Damn, that's one of those things. I don't think it can see me. Actually, it doesn't appear to have eyes. Wait, looks like there's a hiding spot just behind it. I can sneak past. Or I'll see if I can sneak past. Now, these monsters can be bypassed just by moving into these little nooks right here. They seem to be uh, put here mostly just to be a nuisance and uh, to stop you from getting into other areas. We're just gonna wait here until he starts walking away. Alright, so uh, we can exit now. We actually can't go back to where we came, so our only option, I believe, is to go between these curtains. So we may as well go through. I'm gonna stop here because I want you guys to hear the music in the background. You've got what seems to be some lovely, uh, I believe, steel drums in the background, and some big piano. The music is composed by the person who made the game, like I, like I said earlier. It's just absolutely fantastic. Anyway, let's go talk to uh, the girl who appears to be holding a snake. She looks suspiciously like she's from the ring as well, and she doesn't seem to have a face. Hello. Hello? Nobody in this game wants to talk to us. Are you okay? What's that you're holding? <laughs> Our character seems suspiciously okay with this disappearing girl. Uh, we seem to have gotten a flashlight which uh, didn't have any sort of string around it, so I don't know how it's attached to our neck. <laughs> Let's try switching it on. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that, but there was some sort of androgynous character to the right. I don't know if they'll become plot important later, but, uh, you know, pay attention to that. Damn, my head. In fact, I don't know if you can hear it, I but there is a very slight throbbing going on in the audio right now. So far, there are so many nice little touches. I've got a pounding headache. Damn, night terrors. No better than the days. Well, good morning, flashlight, old friend. <laughs> I don't know if I would decide to call my flashlight, which I had stolen from a disappearing girl, my old friend, but to each their own. And there's us turning on our flashlight. Time to face the other side of one. Which I will be turning immediately off because I do not want to waste our battery. It's a survival horror after all. <laughs> Before the text box came in, you can see that the space opens our inventory. And we've got some si sort of green medicine just, just sitting idly beside our bed, which worries me. Our, our main character might be a drug addict, folks. Let's see if I can get anything. We're checking our radio right now. We the survivors are praying for... in 203. That's all I can get. Hmm. 
I wonder if I should head for 203 first. Maybe there's someone alive in there. Um, so from, from context, I can assume we're in, a par in some sort of apartment building. Go we'll read the diary. Nothing exciting happened today. I tried to eat an insect I caught, but it's no use. It's just me now. I have to get out there. I need to find a weapon, something long range. Those sons of bitches are too dangerous up close. And I don't want their nasty disease getting on me. Then maybe I could get me something to eat. Oh, I remember where I put their key. It's on the sofa in the living room. I don't know where the key for their bedroom is, though. That's the latest entry. I assume that to be our our diary. Doesn't really explain it. Let's take a look on this uh, on this cupboard here, or wherever this is, the wardrobe. We'll read it. Uh, and it looks like this is our game's control scheme, or a way of showing it off. Try to integrate it seamlessly. Things that are important here are how to interact, uh, weapon mode toggle, and uh, basically every other thing on that screen. And as you can see, uh, you can use your bed to save. <laughs> Went through that last one a little quickly because there's some things that are I can consider spoilers there. All right, so here is a battery to our left, which I can assume will power our flashlight. It's faded. Been there a long time, I guess. I think his appreciation for art has gone down this last few years. There's a Coke here on the wall. I don't know whose it is. Oh, is that mine? <laughs> it seems our character has a uh, strange amount of, I guess, graciousness? He doesn't want to touch other people's things, which is strange to me. <laughs> Look deeply into it. That's, that's some strange phrasing there. Not bad, considering. So I suppose that's our comment on ourselves. We're not looking bad. It feels like it feels like it's trying to draw me into some other place, but it doesn't know where it wants that to be. Maybe there will be other mirrors that we can find later on in the game. I think that they'll probably teleport us or something. This is the key to 206. I think this is the one that was being talked about in the entry earlier. So that's where I left it. Alright, actually, it probably was our diary then. We're gonna take a look in the fridge, because, you know, why not? What's that smell? Even with my mask on, it's making me dizzy. <laughs> Let's love on the edge. Let's see what it is. I can hardly bear to touch this. It's, it's piles of rotting meat. I'll take six pieces for now. That's the most I can handle. <laughs> Don't worry, bro. I probably wouldn't even wouldn't even take one. My stove. I don't remember it happening, but it's out of gas. I'll have to find some more. <laughs> what are you gonna cook on it, there? Are you gonna cook rotting meat? Anyway, before we examine this, look at it. It's it, it looks like some sort of can't even tell honestly. Some sort of wise old cat woman, man. Oh, that's not what I meant to pick up. Uh, we got some kind of diary page. And, uh, on top of what appears to be a washing machine is a cat plush, apparently. We may as well take it. <laughs> Actually, your your backpack was about as big as that cat plush. <laughs> and you seem to be barely surviving. I don't know why you could... why you assume it's good to ration that amount of space to a cat plush. <laughs> Anyway, folks, I, I think this is going to be where I'm going to stop the recording right now. So uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.